so I start to sell them. It doesn't look like here, right? I also lose on um, the Pepsi one, but um, okay. And, and also in um, this one, the, uh, Baba, yeah, Baba. Was, yeah, Baba was normally doing good, but um, I think it's this uh, three four days that it's been it's been uh, doing bad, so I lose some money in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, but but you still made about seven thousand dollars in overall profit mm -hmm. loss year to date. I'm sorry. You made an mm -hmm. overall seven thousand dollars profit loss profit year to date. Yes. So. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you very much, Margaret. I appreciate it. Uh, so next time when I call upon you, you should know what to do, right? All right. Okay, good. Okay, Asaki. Um, so basically what's going on today is, well, yesterday, uh, no, over the weekend, Warren Buffett uh, said um, that he had pulled his shares out of uh, the airline industry. Mm -hmm. And um, he said he doesn't have any faith in the airline industry right now. He said he's not really buying any stocks because he doesn't see anything worth his time. Uh, as a result of him pulling his shares out over the weekend, um, in addition to him pulling, he lost $50 billion selling off shares of his own Berkshire Hathaway. Um, right. The $50 billion is probably like 50 cents to him. Um, and as a result of him taking his money out of the airlines, the airlines tanked again, well, went down again yesterday. I don't know how bad it tanked. Um, so that was over the weekend. Now today, we're uh, also over the weekend or yesterday or end of last week, J. Proof was the first um, company to file for bankruptcy. J.C. Penney is expected to be next, as well as Neiman Marcus. Um, and as well as a lot of other companies. Today, the big thing is uh, people are coming, companies are coming to the realization that these job losses are now going to be permanent. Uh, GE is gonna lay off as many as 13,000 jobs. Um, okay. If it wasn't GE, it's another company that said, we are looking for people to voluntarily um, resign. Yeah, it's GE. They want them to voluntarily resign, um, but they will start laying, laying people off as of October permanently. They can't do it right now because they got bailout money, not bailout, they got a, yeah, bailout money. Um, so they still have to hold on to these people. Um, what else? Uh, we talked about the retailers. Um, Carnival is actually supposed to start selling, uh, sailing again in August. So that's that was surprising to me. Um, um, they talked about the euro uh, decision, um, a crucial court decision sends the euro dollar lower, and um, that seems to be the big thing right now. Is that all these companies are uh, the clothing industry even. As a matter of fact, um, when I read the New York Times today, they were talking about some companies, some clothing companies don't even have enough money to file bankruptcy. Right. They're gonna open their stores uh, and they're gonna liquidate sales uh, or liquid, they're gonna sell off, uh, sell off their clothing and things like that so they have enough money to file for bankruptcy. Right, so that is a very important concept. Um, everybody, if you're not paying attention, listen to this carefully. Uh, that when companies file for bankruptcies, usually they emerge as a stronger company after bankruptcy. Bankruptcy does not mean that the company is going to shut down altogether. Um, all it means is that they may want to shut down parts of their business that are not successful, that are losing money. So as long as they can shut down those business units, uh, the company may emerge as a stronger company. So all of that requires 
uh, consistent income, um, uh, you know, uh, funding of uh, of the company while um, they take these strategic decisions. Now, uh, lenders are not going to give them money during that time period because they have already filed for bankruptcy. Uh, there's share prices are probably tanking uh, when there's news that they are filing for bankruptcy. So liquidation sales are basically the only way for companies to continue to raise capital by selling their stock that, you know, stock by stock, I mean the, uh, the actual physical stock of whatever they sell. Uh, so let's say if a, if a, if Walmart is considering bankruptcy, then the stock or JC Penny, let's talk about real companies that are actually considering, uh, uh, bankruptcy. So JC Penny would be one of those companies, but how do you hold the liquidation sale? when you can't even open a store, right? So you can't get money from lenders. You can't so they raise money by selling stock because you know, stock is already tanking and you're not allowed to, if, if you bring in more stock, you'll actually devalue your stock anyway. And then you cannot hold uh, liquidation sales. So that's what uh, Asaki talked about. So Asaki, what did the article say? About which one? That article that talked about. Oh, it talked about. Um, the I title think, of the article. Excuse me. The title of the article. Um. Title of the article was. It is too expensive. Oh, it was here. The companies are too broke to file for bankruptcy. Yeah, pretty much. They, yeah. it, they don't have enough money to file for bankruptcy. Right. So, okay. Anything else? Um, um, there's also a race to the finish. Oh, I found this very, very interesting. There's a race to obviously find the cure mm -hmm. um, or, or a vaccine. And they're only giving companies 10 days to prove that it can, uh, it can make some headway. If not, they're shutting it down. Oh. Um, a lot of companies are, a lot of states are opening. Um, yesterday, they just announced New Jersey schools are closed for the rest of the year. I don't know what they were waiting for, by the way. Okay. Um, but they are opening parks and things like that. Uh, there are some, comp some states like Utah mm -hmm. just closed down uh, barbershops, tattoo parlors, a whole bunch of other places that they opened up because they got over 500 complaints. Oh, an Amazon executive quits. That I found to be extremely interesting. So he quit his high ranking job because the company decided to fire employees who raised concerns about worker safety during the pandemic. And mm -hmm. he said, I can't, I can't, I can't be a part of that um, because he knows it's unfair. Um, that was interesting. I found it very interesting too that um, a lot of meat companies, um, sorry, a lot of uh, meat companies are closing down because they don't have the workers, but now it's affecting Kroger and the grocery stores and Costco and these places are now having, um, they are only allowing customers to buy like maybe three pieces of meat and that's it. Okay. Um, I think that was about it. Yeah. So uh, Maya asked a very good question in the chat. She said, can't they sell online uh, for liquidation sales? Of course they can. And usually uh, a lot of these companies, when they file for bankruptcy, that actually becomes their only business model, Maya. So for example, a lot of companies have gone bankrupt in the last few years. Um, there used to be a company, um, uh, a, com a comp USA long time ago. Anybody remembers comp USA? Yes. That's right? a company. In New so York. They still exist, but all their business has moved on to online uh, sales only. They were like the best buy before best buy existed. I don't know if they were that big. Huh? They weren't that big. Well, see, 
Illinois was my first home when I came to US. Got it. Right? So in Illinois, everywhere you go, you know, Best Buy was where all Best Buys were far away. Um, Comp USA were, were everywhere. And, you know, they still exist. Uh, they have online presence. Uh, Best Buy um, has reduced its footprint uh, everywhere. Um, so this is what's going to happen to JCPenney and, and all these other stores uh, that can go online, they will. But the problem is Amazon is, um, is hitting oh, everybody it. hard. What uh, I found interesting about Amazon, which is every time I read an art article about Bezos, I have to take a deep breath because I feel like it's sending my blood pressure up. This man is so wealthy and he is so cheap. For him to come out at the beginning or the middle of the, the virus to say, hey, can you guys donate towards whatever the cause was, it was so frustrating. Um, and now he's talking about, oh, well, the $40 billion that we made in profits, it's, uh, we're not going to really see that much of it. We're going to have to put it back into the business. Like, really? Yeah. You can afford to put that. And he's like, oh, well, we're going to have to put more than the $40 billion. We we'll probably have to put you know, more than that. I'm like, get over yourself. Mm. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Saki. Uh, thank you, Margarita. I appreciate it. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, the concepts that we need to talk about today. Uh, let me share my screen. This screen. Okay, you see my think and swim, right? Think or think or swim, mm -hmm. right, guys? Yes. Okay. So, um, okay, the market has opened uh, today. Uh, actually, even in the pre-market, there is quite a bit of uh, a recovery today. If you look at this stock, I started. I started this account just as we started this class. I did not have this account before. So you can see on, uh, uh, excuse me, let's do all. Uh, back on April 11th, you know, I started this account with $27,500. So, so far I have made $2,800 on this. So that's about 10% increase in about a month, uh, less than a month actually. Uh, so $2,800 in less than a month on a $27,500 account. Um, I'd say that's quite respectable. Um, these are my holdings. Um, so the only stock. Is this know, a fund or individual stocks you're invested in? Say that again. Is this a fund you invested in or individual stocks? No, these are individual stocks. So Neo, you know Neo, right? My husband has it. I think he heard about it from you, but I don't okay. know. Okay. Uh, Hanan, do you know what Neo is? Uh, no. Razan? I'll look it up. Miriam? No. Clarence? Neo, wasn't that the like uh, Chinese Tesla? Yes, good job, Maya. This is Chinese Tesla. That's the easy way to remember what this company does. It basically deals in uh, manufacture, uh, design and manufacturing of uh, electric vehicles. Uh, so, UCO, the oil stock. You know, of course, I had a lot of, lot of shares bought on this, and they remain negative all the way till Friday. But today, they are doing much better. I don't, I don't understand. You see, you see, oh, yeah. You see, uh, what did you, what, what you, when I split? Yeah, this is the one that split. 
I'm losing money with ECO. How could you be doing this well if when it split, it went to $33 and it's never, it hasn't been back up to $33? Did you buy it at less than $16? I think you're frozen. I'm at negative 554 right now. Yeah, I'm at negative $17 and I only have 0.6. Um, Dr. Navid, you're, let me text him. He's frozen. He may have purchased more to dollar cost average. Mm. Yeah, he may have done that. Hey guys. Okay, you're back. <laughs> I think my internet connection uh, caused a problem. Okay. So, so, so I bought talking. it. So look at this. Um, you're this not is, sharing anything yet. So let's look at one month. No, you got to share your screen again. Oh, okay. I can do that. You can go. Okay. So when this split, a reverse split, their cost per share went up to $23.88, right? So okay. that was after the reverse split. At 33. Oh, you're right, you're right. It could have gone up to $33. Uh, no, well, from what I understand, since they, they projected it to go at 33, when, you, when they got to 23, you were already $10 down. Right. So I had lost a lot of money on this, but, but, but see when this, when the reverse split. He's frozen again. Even with USO guys, Margarita, um, they they expected to go to thirty three twelve, and they're still only at twenty seventy seven. So I'm at a loss for twelve dollars and thirty five cents. What about you, Margarita? Um, I think I'm losing too. Uh, okay. okay, you're back now. You gotta show your screen again. Sorry about that. I okay. went up seventeen dollars, Asaki. So it's positive. Yes. Moving up, Joe's now. <laughs> Do you refresh your account? Maybe you, <laughs> I don't know. I'm still seeing it the same way. Okay. Uh -huh. Am I still here or am you I disconnected are. again? <laughs> You're here. Okay. So after the split, it, it's instead of starting at 33, which they had expected, uh, you know, the value should have been, it went down to $23.88. Now that day, I already had, uh, I don't know, probably 200 shares. So it was a significant uh, drop for me. Mm -hmm. My average cost was showing $33. And, you know, that was actual money. And it had dropped down to $13. Mm -hmm. So when it dropped down to $13, what did I do? I bought more yeah. to bring my average cost down. It went up to $19, but then it came down. Uh, to twelve dollars for I bought more. I bought more, you know, uh, until my average dropped to fifteen forty-two, and I ended up with seven hundred forty-eight shares, and my equity was like twelve thousand dollars of real money. Mm. Uh, but then today, as it went up, it is now doing sixteen thirty-two, and not only I've recovered, I have made six hundred forty-four dollars. Got it. Right. So, and today's return is over nine hundred dollars. So, so that's where I stand with, uh, with this UCO. But anyway, long story short, uh, you know, in this situation, uh, as you know, I was always big on oil, uh, you know, because um, I felt that it has nowhere else to go except up. Uh, that is paying off at this time. Um, Going back to think or swim, I want to talk about some some of the things that we have not talked about yet. Now you 
all of you know how to buy and sell. Uh, what you might not know is, you know, that confusion when to buy and when to get out of. Uh, before we do that, let me do a quick refresher on, um, on the basics of uh, stocks trading, uh, just as a quick overview. Um, I don't think any of this is new for you. Uh, you have already, you already know all of this stuff. So let's talk about that. Okay. Um, you know how to find out market capitalization, right? Uh, market cap. If you have, if a company has million share, selling at $2 each market cap for that company is going to be $2 million. If you own one share, that means that you own one millionth of that company. Uh, there are two strategies, going long and going short. When somebody says I'm going long on a stock, it means that you are buying stock now so that you can sell it later. So that's our usual and normal uh, buying strat, uh, uh, trading strategy. When somebody says going short, that is when we talk about, you know, selling stock now by borrowing and then buying it back later at a cheaper price. So, you know, we've talked about, talked about this before. And there are many other types of trades uh, in terms of risk. So ba based upon what kind of risk you are taking, uh, it defines what kind of trade that you are in. So let me, let me show you uh, this. So for example, if you're talking about um, your holding of a stock that spans several years and decades, then that would be retirement type trading. You know, technically, even if it's not a retirement account, but you buy a stock and you let it sit there for a long time, that would be called retirement trading. Um, so how much time do you need to dedicate uh, for this type of trading? No more than an hour per quarter. So basically you need to log in every quarter, look at the news, see what's going on and adjust your uh, uh, portfolio accordingly and you know one hour per quarter is more than enough uh, of course uh, there are people who who you know years go by before they go back and check their retirement accounts and that's not a good strategy you know uh, there should be some level of uh, frequency to it but it's you know one hour per quarter is more than enough then there's the swing trading swing trading um, is uh, spans weeks to months. So for a few weeks, for a few months, uh, you know, and you are out. So about 30 minutes, uh, twice a week, you know, that we are doing right now, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, basically we're talking about mostly swing trading. Uh, then there's uh, chart trading days to weeks, buying stock because some news recently broke and you want a small taste. Uh, you spend about half an hour to an hour every day uh, but you're not sitting, you're not glued to your screen the whole day. Uh, that would be called chart trading. Then there is day trading uh, for a few hours to maybe a few days. Um, you, you may still need to spend like almost four hours every day, three to four hours. Uh, but then there is a momentum trading. That's basically for seconds to minutes. You buy it and you sell it, you know, for a fraction of an hour um, for a very small movement. So for example, you buy, you know, 5,000 stocks of something uh, and you just wait for, for it to increase by 10 cents. So 10 cents times uh, 5,000 stocks, that's gonna give you what, $500? Uh, and you're done in a few seconds or a few minutes and that's it. But this is, this is the most um, uh, con time consuming. You have to be glued to your screen. Uh, so that would really take eight hours a day. Um, let's, 
Okay. Yeah. This Quick question: Which one do you consider yourself? Um, I'm I'm probably more of a swing trader. Um, I've done some day trading, but uh, but I don't have three to four hours every day to spend on this. I've got plenty of other things going on. So, uh, so that's where I am. But if you look at this, how much could I have made? So in a retirement account, let's say if you bought a uh, share for $4 a piece for 250 shares and you let it sit there for 10 years, uh, assuming that you are doing 10% uh, each quarter. Now doing 10% each quarter is not uh, uh, that outrageous uh, in terms of thinking, you know, I just showed you that we've got, uh, we got this stock less than a month and already, already 13%, right? So 13% in less than a month from, uh, from April 11th, 12th to, uh, to today, you know, uh, 13% that's not a bad uh, uh, assumption. So 10% each quarter is pretty good assumption. So if you let it sit there, so how much money have you spent? 250 stocks, $4 a piece? Maya? Which company? Any company. Okay. How much money are you investing? 250 shares at four dollars a piece okay so that is oh come on one thousand dollars you said five thousand you said five thousand four thousand yeah 250 times four right so you invest one thousand yeah. dollars you let it sit there for 10 years assuming that you're getting 10 percent at the end of 10 years you are going to end up with thirty thousand dollars off of that one thousand now with swing trading, let's say you bought the same stock for $4, you bought 500 shares, you held it for 180 days, and they had that 10% each quarter uh, uh, profits. You, will, you would have made $420. Okay? So you spent $2,000, you invested $2,000, on $2,000 in six months, you made $420 you got out, you invested in something else. And then there's chart trading. Chart trading, you usually would buy it a little bit more expensive because you know this you bought 10 years ago. So let's say you paid $4.10 10 for 1,000 shares. You invested $4,100 for two days. You made $400, you got out, and your trade is complete. If you're doing day trading, again, buying it for $4.10 for 1,000 shares, that's $4,100. In one day, you'll make $3. If considering this assumption, 10% each quarter, you make $300, you get out. If you do a momentum trading, you buy 500 shares for $4.25 for four hours, you make $75, you get out and and you call it a day. So that doesn't how, sound like a what? So what would like, you momentum? It just sounds way too like they already said it's really risky, but um, that's a lot. Of but see, you could you could continue to invest and reinvest the same day. Okay, so the, so don't misunderstand this seventy five dollars. Uh, let's, uh, let's do a calculation, a quick calculation here. Um, so let's say you make $75. A, that's half a day, right? So let, let's say in all, all day you made $75 times 22, 22 days, uh, you know, 22 days, uh, stock market is open on average for a month. Okay. So in a month you make 1650 times 12 months. That's $19,800 a year. Multiply that by 10, that's $200,000. Wait, what is the 10 from? In 10 years. Uh, 
right? In 10 years, you made $200,000. Uh, but, but considering that you were not reinvesting this $200,000, if you, as you continue to invest this $200,000 back into um, your, strat your, your investment, you would end up with a lot more than $200,000. So now imagine this 30,000 in 10 years versus 200,000 in 10 years, right? So, so uh, don't underestimate, don't, don't think that this is a small number. This is a, this is a pretty respectable number. Okay, so there was nothing new in this, right? So you already knew all of this. I just wanted to have it in, in writing so you can see this. Um, so each stock purchase comes with its own risks and rewards. Uh, there are things that are outside of your control. There are things that are inside of your control. So outside of your control, general market, market movers, you know, market movers would be, you know, what Asaki talked about, Warren Buffett, you know, that would be market movers. Their, their sneeze can shake the market. You know, that can bring... Uh, a fever to the market, right? So that's what we saw over the weekend with airline industry. Uh, system problems, company selling more stocks to decrease their price, uh, bad news announcements, competitors, good news. You don't have any control over this, but what can you do? Um, you, can, you can read the general market and react accordingly, adjust your portfolio. Uh, you can anticipate how how the market typically reacts when a market mover does something. Um, companies selling more stock, you know, how much risk are you willing to bear? Do you wanna buy more stocks and take a risk on your money? Or you wanna get out of that company and invest somewhere else, take, take your losses, you know. Um, if there's a bad news, you have to consider factors. What does that bad news mean? Excuse me, Dr. Naveen. Huh? Uh, are you going to send this to us? Yeah, sure. Um, also, uh, you said you consider yourself a swing trader. So I can't hear you. Can you speak up? I said you said you consider yourself a swing trader. Yeah. Um, does that mean that you're you have your specific days to go um, and look at things, or are you? Um, so I'm you I'm looking yeah, I'm looking at things all the time. All day? Oh, you know, <laughs> every few every few minutes, you know, I'm, I'm looking at what's going on in the market. But do I react to it with that frequency? No, I just, I just like to be in the know. So if there is something to react to, then I log in and I react. And what so, about when you're working what, before COVID and you didn't have enough time? You were still, you still had your screens open and looking at stuff? Oh, I would still spend maybe half an hour every day. So, I, I, you know, I would read news regularly. And once you get it, you know, it's like riding a bicycle. You know, you can't, you cannot, uh, you, if you listen to news, of course, you, you're going to click on business news as well and see, you know, get a feel of what's going on in the market. Um, I changed my Facebook time for the stock market watch now. <laughs> I cannot be on both, so I have to delete Facebook and go into the stock market. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's a good news. Oh, by the way, you guys are hilarious. I I could not figure out how that group me thing was working, so I I push you guys onto WhatsApp, and then uh, I figured out how to use group me, and there was there was some hilarious things that you guys were sharing. Um, well, I don't have time to go through that, but some of those things I really loved. Um, okay. Especially, who was it? I think it's, it was Clarence family, right? Uh, when uh, husband and wife, they almost, you know, almost got into an argument over whose trade is going to go first because they had one computer. That was very hilarious. Yeah, that was me, Erica, yeah. Right? So, so what did you do? What, what was the solution? She she put the app on her phone and I and I, I stayed on the computer. <laughs> okay, so that was that was very interesting. Uh, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. 
Okay, so let's okay. talk about um, a little bit more advanced concept. This is something that you haven't done uh, so far. So this is a chart. This is how you have seen charts, right? Everybody has seen these charts. Now, what can we do? What kind of technical analysis can we do with this to, to make a prediction of what's happening? <clears throat> um, so, so when stock is at a certain point, you know, for example, at this point, there are three things that can happen. You know, so this is a decision point. At any time you look at a stock, there are three things that can happen to this line, to this chart. It can go up, it can remain, you know, um, stay flat, or it could go down, right? These are the three things that can happen. There's nothing else that can, that can happen. Only three options. So if you do not know how to do, do a little bit of more technical analysis on this, you're just guessing. And that's what we have been doing so far, right? We've just been guessing, you know, based on news, you know, what is your gut feel that tells you where this chart is headed? However, uh, good news is that you don't have to guess. These are statistical processes and there are methods to, to predict what's gonna happen going forward. And there's this analysis called ABCD of charts. And I'm gonna to talk to you about the ABCD of charts in a, in a few moments. So that analysis tells us what kind of pattern may be coming in next. Okay, so let's look at it. So what does A mean, B and C and D mean? A means a new high is achieved. So look at this chart. This was a new high because it was trading at this level. The, the stock price went up, then it became flat. So this was a new high. Then it went down a little bit and then it went up and the new high was better than the previous high. So that's another new high. Then it went down, stayed flat, then it went up and achieved a new high, another high, another high. So you see all of these are A um, patterns. And then this is another A. So all of these are similar patterns. Anytime a stock hits a new high, that's an A pattern. Any questions? Okay. So if you looked at a chart, you could you could right away tell whether that's an A pattern or not, right? Right? You should not have any problem looking at it. Right. So anytime you look at a chart, anytime you see these peaks, you should be able to tell this is A pattern, this is A pattern, this is A pattern, right? So, so that's very easy to talk about. The second uh, pattern is called B pattern. It pulls back, but not as low as before or to support. Okay. That's another good question. Support, what does support mean? Let's look at Thinkorswim one more time. This is a live chart of Home Depot. You can click on drawing and go to drawing tools and pick this line tool. This is called a trend line. So let's pick this trend line. I selected this trend line. You see the cursor turns into uh, a pen and I I see this is this is a pattern does it look like an a pattern right so I'm gonna click somewhere in here and I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a line across this um, excuse me can you go back so I can see how you, which you chose what did you choose okay okay let's do it so go to drawings Got it. so you are under charts uh -huh. under charts, so charts, charts, okay? Sub-menu charts. Mm -hmm. Not the flexible grid, not the product depth, but charts. Go to drawings, you click on drawing tools, 
and pick trend line. Oh, that's trend line. Okay, trend line. So click at this A pattern just a little bit before this A pattern. Before the first A pattern. First A pattern. And so, so you see, you can you can go any direction, but you, this is this can be a little bit tricky. So you have to make sure that this is that you make a really straight line. Uh, how do you know that this is a straight line? By reading. So look at that blue box. Eight fifty eight hundred fifty seven days, one hundred and twenty bar, one hundred twenty four bars, plus zero percent, plus zero, less than zero degrees. You see that? Yeah, so you're just drawing it from the first one all the way. No, you drew it. To the end of the chart, yeah. To the end you, of the chart, started, and I'm going to click again. You started so before this is the first my one. line. Okay, so I, start, I clicked here. I went to the other end, and I clicked here. So this is my uh, trend line. I do the same thing to the bottom. Uh, so the bottom of this... Uh, area starts here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to draw another line, making sure that my uh, angle is zero degrees, zero percent and everything is zero. Oh, oh, what did I do? I didn't click it. So I'm going to click it here. Okay. So so that's what I did, right? So then look at this. This is another high, another A pattern, right? A new high is met. So I'm gonna I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna go on to this area. Again, making sure that this is a straight line. And then you can when once you have a line, you can double click that line and it'll bring up the properties of this line. Um, you want to show arrows, you want to do different things, you can do that. You can change the color, you want a different color, you, you can change the style, you know, if you want dot, whatever you want to do. So I'm not interested in that right now. I'm focused on the main concept. And this is the low point. So I'm going to, I'm going to click that again here and create a, an exactly straight line right here. This is a straight line. Okay. So these lines are called, well, I'll tell you what they're called. So when, once this A pattern was achieved, you know, a new high is met. Why does it not continue to go up? Right? There was a, there was, you know, there are three things that can happen, right? This is a decision point. Three things that can, it can continue to go high or it can flatten or it can go down. It decided to go down. This Part, this space, this place is called resistance. That people who are trading this stock, they did not think that this price point was sustainable. So they start, they stop buying. So once they stop buying, there was still a volume. You look at this chart here, this chart expresses volume. So there is plenty of trading volume that is coming in. It's just that most of that volume is coming in from the people who want to sell it. Um, and the buyers want a lower price. So, so they met this resistance. So this is called resistance line. Okay. Now it starts to go down, go down, go down until this point where where the brokers feel, the people who are buying and selling, they feel that it has come down significantly and there's only one thing that can happen, that it needs to go up. So people start to buy again because there are a lot of sellers now, people start to buy again. So this, at this point, this thing is called support. This line is called support line. So, so in this particular case, in this particular time interval, the price of the stock did not break the support level. Okay, so the support line maintained itself. Then it started to go up and it met a new high. 
at this point it it broke the resistance but it did not last long as soon as it broke resistance it then started to come down until it hit the support line and it tested the support line it tested the support line and it broke the support line but then immediately then started so what does that tell you that tells you that the market is in agreement the buyers and sellers are in agreement that the price should not go you know this the support is the minimum price for this today during this time interval and that's why it started to go back up it tested the resistance again it hit it then it came down right so so you can see the 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 resistance and support levels are being constantly tested until it reached this point it broke the support set a new high new a pattern came down a little bit but then it went up and set a new standard now this is this level is a new resistance level okay this is a new resistance level because this is where the a pattern is made and now the values of the stock is coming down it went up again it tested it and then it came back so it means this is a new support level so a stock price in over a period of a day or a month or years can have multiple resistance levels now at the same time as this became the new resistance the previous resistance became support you see that it touched the support went back up tested uh the resistance came back down again now if it breaks this resist this uh, support level it it is probably the next support level is going to be that previous support level that we had it broke that as well and it created a new support level so now we know that there are these uh, resistance levels and these support levels and stocks usually traverse their path within those uh, patterns and if you are a day trader or a chart trader it is crucial for you to be able to read these signs okay because you are making money on the this movement on identifying your entry points and exit points so if you were a day trader what would you do as long as this is an upward trend you continue to sell the moment it hits an a point now you start you start to get ready to buy you buy some here you buy more you buy more you buy more until you hit this pattern and i'm going to talk about this is b pattern so you know uh, excuse me this this is b pattern this is c pattern so the moment you see you identify c pattern you stop buying you you know that was your uh stopping point for purchasing now you start to sell and and you buy and sell with with this movement of the chart by identifying um you know these support levels and uh and resistance levels okay now that's one always remember these things are uh statistical in statistics this type of process is called a stochastic process so that there are too many factors that are directing this behavior so you have to really pay attention uh to multiple factors the support level and resistance levels this is just one of many things that you need to be mindful of okay so let's go back to uh to the charts but to the patterns 
So B is a point where it pulls back, but not as low as before. So it does not test the support level. It does not touch the support line. Goes down a little bit, but remains still pretty close to the new high. So for example, um, for example, at this point, okay, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll show you a chart in a moment. Let's talk about C pattern. It starts to increase. This is a point. So B would be when it starts to pull back, starts to come down. C is when it starts to increase. So for example, this would be a C point, C pattern, that it is going up now. And D is a pattern where it surpasses the new high. So for example, where would be D? D would be somewhere in here when it has surpassed the previous A. And whenever you see D pattern, you know that the price is still going to go higher. So let's look at the B points. Okay, so anytime there's a downward trend, that's a B pattern. This was A pattern, right? The green lines are A patterns. The red lines are B pattern. Then again, A pattern, B pattern, A, B, A, B. So um, I see when you're doing the, so at the third peak thing, on that green line you said A, but then wouldn't that be D because it's like surpassing the previous high? No, no, B, B is always when it's I coming mean, down. B. Like no, it's wouldn't only it? when it's coming down, when it's when it's pulling back. Okay. No, I, I said D. Like, wouldn't that be D? Because like you said, it's when it passed. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Give me a moment. We'll go step by step. Okay. Oh, okay. Look at this chart. Now here we're talking about C pattern. The C pattern is when uh, uh, when it starts when it starts the upward trend. Okay, A pattern is when it has achieved a new high. B is the downward traversing. And C is um, uh, upward trajectory. Okay, A pattern is the apex, right? It's the top, it's the, it's, it's the top of the, so when that upward movement starts, that's the C pattern. So this is a very specific session close declaring a change in direction with volume. So you also have to see, you know, the, you see these blue bars down here. So, so there has to be a volume. So you can see here, there's a lot more volume than at this point. This point, these blue bars, they are representing volume. So you can see that during this particular day, this black area had smaller volume than the next day. Next day, there's a lot more volume. And at this particular point, there's a very little volume. So when there is a high volume and it is moving upward, this is time to buy, okay? This is time to buy when there's volume. If there's no volume and there's an upward movement, that's not a true C pattern. So you're not only, you're not only looking at the direction, you're also looking at the volume. So how do you see volume on, the, in, on an actual uh, think or swim platform? Right here, this, this area, this is volume. You see this? It says volume. Did you say when there's high volume and it's going up, that's when it's time to buy? Yes. So for example, you see this is a C pattern right here. This is live data. This is, this is a C pattern and there's a volume. So you buy, you know, this is time to buy. Look here. So right here, there's a huge volume coming in and you see a positive, the moment you see this green doji, green candle, this is time to buy because there is volume. Okay. But there's a lot of green ones. Say that again? There's a lot of, there's a lot of green empty ones. Dojos. Okay, so let's, let's talk about, okay, now, um, in the previous screen, 
and said, you know, even though this looks like a C pattern, but this is not a true C pattern. Why not? Because there's no volume. Okay. It has a C pattern, but since there is not enough volume, few people believe in this stock going higher. Don't buy. You know, there's not enough volume. Don't buy. Don't touch that stock at that time. Is it because the line going down? No, the line was going up, but there was not enough volume. Oh, I thought we we're looking at the blue line because it looked from that picture that you just had up. It looked like it oh, was. Oh, no, no, not the blue line. The blue line is something else. I'll talk about that in a moment as well. I'm talking oh. about these bars, these blue bars. At the oh, bottom. blue bars. Okay. So that blue bars, they represent volume. So smaller the bar, the smaller volume, the, you know, look at this bar. You know, these bars are higher than these. So this represents higher volume. Doc, um, what range of volume should we be looking at? It depends. It depends. If you're talking about stock like Amazon, uh, you know, the numbers would be smaller. If you look at Berkshire Hathaway, uh, yeah, so let me show you actually. So if you're dealing in stock from Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway, one stock, no, the other Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway A, this one. So one stock is worth $267,000. Oh, so if you want one share in in Warren Buffett's company, you need to have $267,000 to even get in. They won't even let you at the door. So how many people do you think can trade that kind of price point? 1%. Not a whole lot. So look at the volume, average volume, 696 shares. So they don't trade a lot of shares per day because their value is, you know, per share is huge. But if you look at any penny stock, the volume would be in millions, right? This, this number would have millions against it. So, so I can't tell you what volume is a good volume without knowing the price point for that uh, stock. That, can, can we look at, um... HSBC, they're also, it's a holding company also. Uh, it's out of London. I was checking that out earlier. Yeah, sure. This is HSBC. No, this is. Which is, this one, right? This, this one. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Right. So here you see, even though the uh, the stock price is going down, there's volume coming in. Right. So yes. there's two factors at that point. You now understand how to read A, B, C, D uh, patterns. You also understand how to uh, how to draw uh, resistance and support levels. Um, and you also now understand how to read uh, volume. There's yet another concept, a very important concept, and that concept is called um, RSI. RSI, um, so RSI is called Relative Strength Index. And you probably don't see it in your chart. Do you see it in your charts in your think and swim? Think or swim? Is it supposed to be automatic or is something you have to add? Okay. To so if you don't see it, this is what you can do. You click on studies. Click on studies up here. And click edit studies. There are a lot of 
studies here. We'll talk about that, and there are a lot of strategies. Uh, so, you so you type RSI, and this comes up right here, up top. Click, double click that RSI, and this will show up here. So I have it twice. So I'm going to delete the first one. Uh, so RSI, you can also so so let's say we we choose that and hit OK. What did we do? Click studies. Click edit studies, search for RSI, add that, double click that so it becomes, it gets added over here and then you can apply or okay or just hit okay directly. You get it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you can also, you know, if you come here on this line, it will allow you to increase or decrease the size of each window if you need it to. How are you doing that? Also, oh, so just oh, yeah, point you, Got it. you know, on this line and it'll let you, you know, hold and, and go up and down. Okay. So, uh, this is called relative strength index. Relative strength index <clears throat> uh, operates from 0% to 100%. Um, so this is 50% right here in the middle. And what it's showing is if it crosses above 70%, it means this is an overbought stock. And the next movement is most probably going to be downward movement because it is oversold excuse me, it is overbought. When, when it is at a 50%, right in the middle, that means that, that in terms of overbought and oversold, it is right there in the middle. It is at the right point. It is right there in the middle. Uh, but when it goes below 30%, it means it's oversold. Now people usually start to buy. Okay. When it goes beyond uh, lower than thirty percent or fifty percent. Yes, when it when it goes lower than thirty percent, usually it is time to buy. So look at this. When it hit this low point, you were at this doji. If you bought <laughs> more stock. You could not have gone wrong. You would have made a few cents. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. So, so every time point, it's like under. This should have been your, this is overbought. You should sell and get out of this. If it starts to hit 80%, which it is hitting right now, HSBC. This so is trying to get out. This is oversold. It, it has gone above 70%, the RSI. This is time to get out of it. This is How are you measuring in percent? Buy. Again, this is, this is a day, uh, this is one week, right? Yeah, this is one week time horizon. So let's do one day, one minute chart. So you have to pay attention of where you are. So this is right now, this is today. So it is still doing, you know, close to 50%. This is neither overbought nor oversold. It's hovering right about 50% mark. You see that Clarence? Yeah, but That's I'm not sure how, you, how are you measuring the percentage of, of oh, what it is. I don't right here on, there's a scale on the, on the right hand side. You see this scale? Oh, okay, okay. The fifty-four. It says fifty-four. Right, right. So you you just bring your mouse hover hover around this area. It it reads you right here at the end. Fifty-one percent. Right, it's fifty-one percent. As I go up, it's fifty-four percent. Fifty. Now it's coming down as I move my mouse up and down. So you need to align it uh, with the with the chart. 
and then it tells you right now this low point was 48%. But if I take it out, if I take the mouse out of this area, then you see 50%, 40%, 60%, 70 80 and then the top line would be 100%. On the lower side. So this is I between 70, 70 and 30, they are highlighted. So it is easier to read. But this would be a point where it is oversold. Yeah, I'm not sure from which you, I, th I thought I was with you, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'm, on, I'm looking at it on my phone, but I'm not at the computer. So maybe that's oh, maybe I'm not the whole thing. You need another computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we know the backstory, right? So. <laughs> yeah, <great. laughs> okay. So, okay. So we're going to repeat this concept uh, in the next uh, several classes. Okay. So don't worry about it if it is if it is a little bit overwhelming right now. Um, the key is that we will we will revisit this concept several times. I'm going to ask you, you know, in the future uh, classes, just like we do, you know, the uh, the after hours report. I'm going to ask you to read me the RSI index volume and uh, those patterns A B C D patterns from your charts. Okay, so we'll have plenty of practice with this. So right now, just absorb this, uh, absorb the names. For any company, like so when we're presenting, you'll just- Sorry, say that again? When we have to present, you'll pick a random company off of our list. Absolutely, you can, you know, the company that you're dealing in, the stocks that you, that you own. So we'll most probably go to monitor, pick a company. So let's say it's BP. So we'll come back to chart. You know, I'll ask you to, Pull that holding, uh, BP. Yep, we got the right one. Okay, um, and then I ask you read me how the volume is working and how the RSI is working. When you bought something, how did you de determine? You know what should be your entry point? Of course, if you are at if the RSI. So for example, right now, let's say if you needed to make a decision for BP by looking at this chart right here. You don't know, right? By just looking at it, you don't know whether it's gonna go up, down, or stay stable. So you have to make a determination. So you look at volume. Do you see a lot of volume for BP? Compared no. to earlier in the day, there's not volume. There's almost no volume at all for BP, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Should you buy or sell? You have to look at the RSI. You probably should not buy or sell yeah, this stock right now. You look at resistance, resistance, uh, excuse me, you look at RSI. RSI is right, hovering right around 50%. So this is not neither overbought nor oversold. Mm -hmm. So there is no particular reason for you to buy BP right now this instant. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. However, if it was yesterday, you'd buy. RSI had hit below 30% and you had purchased some stocks and kept it overnight. See what would have happened? Yesterday at that point, the price was, uh, what was the price? $22, 22, no, 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 no. At that particular, $22 and 74 cents. That was the price at that particular t moment in time. If you had bought 1000 shares of BP, you know, in your paper money account, and you you were ready to sell it now, you would have made almost two dollars per share. So you could have made two thousand mm. dollars. But there's not a lot volume at that time. Right, right. So there was not enough volume. So again, you have to look at a lot of factors. If you look at just one factor, if you just look at volume, you would not buy it. But if you also consider with volume, you also consider RSI, then you might. Okay. Similarly, if you, if you extend this, uh, let's uh, change this tool. Uh, where is that? Yep, right here. So if you look at the patterns, this, this was B pattern, right? was coming down and then it started it became uh, what pattern is this 
Many stars will go up. Oh, um, C. C. C pattern, but this is not a true C pattern, not enough volume. So, so it's practically flat, but then it starts upward trajectory. Right? But this stock yesterday was not too dramatic. So even though there are ups and downs, those ups and downs are not, not really huge ups and downs in that particular instant in time. So I'm gonna zoom out and pick up this area. So here, do you see a lot of volume? No. Nope, no volume. So a small purchase and sale could cause this type of jump. So very difficult to read in this particular type of situation. And look at the RSI. RSI was nobody was buying. You know, that was huge. Right? Volume says don't buy it. RSI says don't buy it. And the pattern is not uh, anything that we have talked about. It's not A, B, C, or D pattern. So so what should be the decision point at this time, at that instant in time? Don't do anything. Don't touch it. Right? Okay. Um, I'm going to stop here because I know this is uh, quite a bit. So I'm going to share these notes with you. Uh, so you can, you can uh, read these uh, tomorrow, day, today and tomorrow, and, and see if you can find these patterns, if you can use these patterns to make some of the trades today and tomorrow. And then we come back on Thursday and we revisit these concepts and add a few more, a few new concepts to it. Any questions? How do you, add, can you add multiple uh, stocks to the charts? Yes, so you click on flexible grid right here. So under chart, um, go flexible grid and it'll bring you, it'll give you four charts. So you can have different companies being tracked at the same time. The volume is already here. You right click anywhere and you can add a study, right? Yep, yep, you can. So you can go add a quick study or you can edit study and add um, RSI, hit OK, and where is RSI? Hmm. I thought we added a study, didn't we? Screen is not big enough to see it. Sorry, say that again? It doesn't look like the screen is big enough to see it. I cannot hear you. It doesn't look like the screen is big enough to see it, to show yeah, it. That's probably it. Um, let me let me actually- uh, You can move it upwards. That's what I just did. Like when you, you go on it? the you line, it? like when you go on the box, the top line of the box, that's like the size of it and like stretch it up, then you can see all of it. Oh, there we go. Good, thank you. So then the RSI tab starts to appear right here. So we could make this bigger and then bring it down. So it's still here. Well, yeah, at this point it goes away. So, so you have to have enough space for it to show. Ooh, looks like you should be uh, one, quick thing, one quick thing, uh, another quick study. Studies, quick study and go to moving averages. Moving averages are also important way of looking at what the price should be at any given time, um, or what can you expect the price to be uh, in a short time period going forward. So there are a lot of different types of moving averages. Most popular one of those are uh, moving average exponential and moving simple moving average. Simple moving average is, as the name suggests, it's simple, it's just, you know, let's say five day simple moving average. So it's gonna take the price of the stock for the last five days, add them all up, divide it by five, that's gonna give you simple moving average for the last five days. Exponential moving average, on the other hand, is a weighted average. So the closer time horizon would have more weight, the 
uh, the far away days would have lesser uh, moves. So if, if I add simple moving average, I want you to pay attention to the chart behind, okay? So I'm gonna click this simple moving average. You see this blue line that appeared? That blue line is the simple moving average. Now, what does it signify? What does it mean? See, there's an interesting pattern right here. Uh, you know, that the moving average said that the price should be at this level, but the actual pricing was off. So if I add instead a quick study, go to, uh, again, um, moving averages and pick exponential moving average. Uh, where's the exponential moving average? Oh, I changed it to exponential moving average. So I, if I double click this, it'll bring up the, uh, just the, okay, click studies and edit studies. So moving exponential is already there. Uh, let's do simple moving average. So both charts are added now. Hit okay. You see two lines. Let's change the color for one of these lines. So you have simple and exponential? Yeah. So these are simple and exponential moving average. So you, you can have a lot of studies. So you can have a lot of different types of lines. You can color code them so you know what you're, what you're dealing with. So this is simple moving average in red color and in blue color, it's the exponential moving average. Uh, how do I know? By looking at this area, okay? So the color would match with what, whatever line you're looking at. What is so the, the exponential, color here? What is the exponential average moving? I mean, sorry, say that again. Show? What did you say? What does this, the exponential average show? Oh, so it, it basically it's a weighted average. It's a, it's a moving average, but it's a weighted moving average. Now, what is weighted moving average? That would be um, eighth grade question. <laughs> well, I am not smarter than an eighth grader, so please tell me what it means. Okay, so okay, you know the concept of moving average, right? No. Okay. You know the concept of average? Yes. Maya, what is an average? Average is when you take all the numbers and then you like divide and stuff to find out like what add, the average Add is. all the numbers in a table. Yeah. Right? Divided by and the Divided number, by that number of them. The count, right? Whatever the count was. So that's yeah. going to give you an average. Uh, what's a moving average? So uh, five day average of a stock price. The stock price changes from day to day, right? So when the price is changing every day, a five day average can only be the last five days, right? So yesterday's last five days would be different from today's last five days. It's a simple average. You add them all, add the price for the last five days, day one, day two, day three, add the price divided by five. That's your simple average, simple five day average. It's called moving average because every day those five days are moving forward. Does that make sense? So the moving average is like you take the average from those five days and then divide it by five. Yeah, so just the last five days. So that would be moving average. Maybe I should, uh, I should give you guys a homework. <laughs> but, but honestly, that would be an eighth grade level homework, but I'll, I'll give it to you. It's simple. Uh, I'll, I'll send out something, so maybe a, a note uh, with a couple of tables asking you to, to calculate moving averages. Okay. So weighted average, exponential average is a weighted average. Weighted average is that you give more weight to certain cells than the others. So for example, 
the closer you are to today, it should have more weight in determining future price. So, you know, who cares about what was the price five days ago? You know, so five days ago, the price five days ago has some, some value toward determining what is today's price, but not as much as yesterday's price. Yesterday's price is more relevant in determining today's price than five days ago. So that's why, you know, now which one's better? I don't know, look at this, look at this chart. So this blue line is exponential moving average. The red line is the simple moving average. Which line is closely following the actual pricing? The red one. Exponent. You think so? Yes. You think blue line is following the actual pricing closely? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, it looks like it's tied to yeah, whatever, what is happening. Right, so there's your answer. The blue one, right? So it depends. Sometimes simple moving average may, may just do fine. The difference in actual and, and uh, simple moving average may not be significant, but sometimes it may be. And there are a lot of formulas for calculating uh, these moving averages. That's why I showed you click studies, quick study, and go to moving average. And you see there are a lot of different types of uh, moving averages. You know, there's daily simple moving average. So if I click on that, um, oh, yeah, the, so the, these, these bars, these uh, blue bars, they represent the daily simple average. Um, so Doc, how often are you looking at all of this? This, this just seems like a whole lot. Like if I got to look at all of these things when I'm ready to buy something, Lord help me. <laughs> so you have to do this if you are, if you have to spend eight hours, um, on your screen, you have to do something, right? So this makes you look busy. <laughs> how often are you looking at this stuff? At these not, not too often. But I don't do When you first anything. started, were you looking more or is it because you just know, you just know now? Yeah, I now know besides my, a little bit miscalculation, a blip, let's say if I estimate something and the price is a little bit higher or lower, I have the luxury I can wait, right? Imagine somebody whose job it is to do day trading. You know, they don't do anything else. This is their job. They have to be you know, more sure than just having an estimate that, okay, my gut feel says this is how the market is headed towards. That's not good enough uh, for that person, but it is good enough for me. I don't have to, I look at a chart and I can, I can, if without having to draw what is a, a resistance level, what is a support level, I can estimate, you know, what the support and uh, resistance levels are. And I, and I can make my determination. I don't even have to get into um, think or swim. You know, I can, I'm just okay with whatever uh, this chart shows me, right? So this chart does not give me the option to draw these fancy lines and things like that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this is, this is an important part of it. But also if you look at it, you know, it refreshes your ref, refreshes your other concept, you know, moving averages. I'm sure everybody in this class has done it, right? Uh, we don't have any elementary school student here, right? So everybody's done it. It's just that you may not remember it because you don't have to do it that often. How often do you have to do moving averages in your daily life? Not, not too often, right? So, so we forget. So this is also the technical, um, Analysis also gives you a way of refreshing your concepts, your math concepts, which was one of the purposes. And if you decide, if somebody, let's say if a college student or a high school student at this time, they decide to go uh, to get a job as a, as a trader on a brokerage company, these concepts are going to be extremely important. They should know how these things work how to do the technical analysis. You know, when you are trying to convince somebody to buy a stock or sell a stock on a professional level, 
it's not good enough to say that, okay, you know, I feel I should buy Tesla because it is dealing at $700, $760, you know, until a tweet comes in, you know, that whole story, right? Mm. Over the weekend on Friday. What about it? What, what story? Yeah. When Tesla Elon was, Musk said that. Yeah. Uh, Selim, you want to talk about high. it? Somebody was just talking about it. So yeah, um, I was saying that uh, okay. Elon Musk, he, he tweeted that his uh, Tesla stock price was too high. And then right after that, like the stock right. went down like $100. And who right. said that? Uh, Elon Musk, the CEO. Um, what? You know, talk about shooting in the foot. Yeah, right? Like, why would you say that? <laughs> Tesla is doing 765 and he sends out a tweet. The price is to immediately it was a falling knife. It was, you know, falling knife is another pattern. Um, you see here, you see here, this, this drop, this, that's called falling yeah. knife. Yeah. So it just came crashing down to 700, you know, $65 per share just erased by that one tweet. So anyway. Wait, wait, wait. It went down to what, from what to what? 765 to 700. Um, so sixty-five dollars erased by a single tweet. So imagine if you had, you know, a, a few hundred stocks. Uh, so okay, so we have two Salims in the class. So I was talking to the other Salim, but let's go to Doctor Salim Khan. Doctor Salim Khan, as you know, he's been attending this class. He's um, uh, he has been investing uh, for a very long time. I know he's been a child psychiatric uh, doctor uh, at Rockford Center in uh, Newark for almost what, 40 years, right, Dr. Selimhan? Yes, sir. Right. So I wanted to, I wanted him to talk about because he's probably the most experienced person among all of, it, uh, among all of us in, the, in this whole class. So I wanted to see if he can share his experience today of how he got into uh, you know, with all his medical uh, job, you know, how did he get started with this? How has he done on his portfolios? What has been his experiences and advice for, for youngsters? Dr. Well, Martin. to begin with, I went with the uh, big, very well-known investment companies like Fidelity, Dreyfus, and primarily they were retirement accounts. And as you said, I was not even checking them once a quarter, more like once in six months or one year, and they were being managed and I was satisfied. Then now last few years when I tried to downsize everything in around me. Dr. Khan, yeah. can you keep, the, keep whatever device you're using a little bit closer to you? Your voice is too low. Okay, so I was saying that, you know, primarily it was in retirement accounts and they were being managed by big companies like Fidelity. And uh, I was lucky they did well. But in the last few years, uh, I got a little more interested doing it myself. Um, so now uh, I spend some time regularly maybe an hour, sometimes a little bit more per day. But I'm very pleased the comments towards the end and the question which were asked, which is, I feel the same way, that there are so many charts and uh, all these technical things. Uh, in the field, there are even names for those people who all the time, uh, they, they are punching these numbers. So, I found for myself a solution, which I call a $275 solution. Meaning I hired a company or uh, to be very specific, there is an investment letter. In my case, it is Cabot Wealth Investment Letter. And that's all it costs me, $300 a year. So 
they do all this punching and everything and confusing that you saw. And once a week, they send me a report of where the economy is. We should we buy certain things? They are very specific. They are not shy. Buy these, consider these, let these go, hold on to these. And in between the week, if there is a pressure on them, they will send a text message right away, get rid of this stocks or sell half of them or buy these new ones. So I have never totally followed them. I may be reading news and maybe adding or subtracting some myself, but sometimes I think that maybe strictly following them would be very interesting because they always claim whatever the market may be up or down, their clients always make some money and a reasonable amount. So this is something you know worth considering. It will be very time saving. Uh, I may be saying something uh, uh, against the class, but that is my personal solution and it is working for me. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Th okay. Thank you very much. So let's uh, um, let's talk about this. Uh, you know, two hundred and seventy-five dollars. You said per month, right? Uh, per year. Per year. Okay. okay. So two seventy-five per year. Uh, that's uh, you know that's that's not a whole lot of money if you have let's say um, half a million dollar in your account to invest or, or a few hundred thousand dollars to invest. Right. Uh, but if somebody is, uh, is putting in, let's say, you know, ma can manage to, to put no more than thousand dollars in a retirement account in a year for them, $275 would be a lot of, uh, fee. So a lot of people are not able to, to save as much, you know, uh, bottom line is that, that very few people, and you are one of the fo fortunate ones. I, I consider myself a very fortunate uh, person from that perspective that, that we are able to put in these thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars into retirement accounts, um, you know, for, for, and then we get rewarded by IRS to begin with, right? That IRS mm -hmm. does not charge us it considers that money that is going into retirement account as a non-taxable amount. So it is more incentive for uh, rather tax deferred. Sorry. Tax deferred. Yeah. At tax point, deferred. You have to pay. So tax deferred uh, retirement accounts are accounts like 401k, 403b or IRAs where you do not pay taxes. If you put money on the money that you have put in your retirement account that year, you pay taxes on this when you take the money out after you're 61 and a half years old. So at that point, you, it becomes your income. And you know when you are in retirement, you don't have any other income coming in. So this would be your only income. So your total income level is smaller. So you pay a smaller portion of taxes later in life when you're not working otherwise. Um, but the more you make, the more money Uncle Sam wants. Uh, so, so it's a, it's a good thing. It's an incentive for high earners to put some money away. Um, for people who are not making a lot of money, there's actually another, not just tax deferred, but also there's another advantage. It's a tax savings um, credit. Uh, uh, no, excuse me, uh, savings credit. What is it called? Hold on. Let me search that. Um, um, retirement. There is one for health, health saving account. HSA. Right, right. And there, there are multiple types of that, you know, HSA, mm -hmm. FSA. Um, mm -hmm. Those are two main ones that come to mind. But there, so you put money in healthcare, health accounts, uh, and you don't use them. You let them grow uh, and you don't pay taxes until you have to use them. But you can only use them towards medical expenses up until certain age. After you cross that certain age limit, then you can use it as your regular income as well. Um, but I wanted to search for that. 
uh, retirement savings tax credit, uh, retirement savings contribution savers credit. That's what it's called. This is directly from irs.gov. So if you are low income, if you are making, let's say, uh, let's look at it. You are eligible for this credit if you are age 18 and older, not a full-time student and not claimed as a dependent on somebody else's tax return. So what does it do? The amount of credit is 50%, 20% or 10% of your retirement plan or IRA or ABLE account uh, contribution depending on your adjusted gross income. So for example, uh, you put down uh, $2,000 towards your retirement account, but your uh, adjusted gross income is no more than $39,000 for a married couple. You get, you get 50, so let's say you put $5,000 in your IRA, you, you get a credit equal to $2,500 from Uncle Sam. <laughs> so you're low income, you're, you're married, your income, combined income is less than $39,000. You put down $5,000 in retirement account, you get $2,500 worth of credit. So you don't pay taxes on the $5,000 that you have put away and you get a $2,500 tax credit. That's pretty good deal for low income uh, families. So it starts to become, if you are, if you make more than $65,000 for a married couple, then it gives you 0%. So then it does not, then say you are rich enough, you know, you don't, you don't need any tax credit. So anyway, just a, just a thought that, you know, when you, come out of college, you're just starting out your new job, you're probably not gonna be making a lot of money in the, in the first few years. It is time to save. <clears throat> okay? And of course, if you make a lot of money, then you, of course, you have to save because otherwise Uncle Sam will take away 35% of your income. Can you uh, if you're in the what? very high tax credit, uh, tax uh, bracket. Can you explain this? What? my okay so my son just recently graduated we i don't think we claim him claim him anymore how would speak up speak I, up i can't hear you my my son recently graduated and um we don't claim him anywhere anymore okay. how would this apply to him and what hold on, and what would single? he have to do is he single yes he is okay is his income less than thirty two thousand dollars five hundred dollars I don't know, maybe. Okay, so if, well, if it goes over $32,500, he does not get any additional tax credit. Okay. But if he is within these brackets, these three brackets, he will get this percentage of, of uh, the money being put away in the retirement account as a credit, as a tax credit towards his annual taxes. That's what I'm saying. Like he would have to open this, Retirement account? Is that what you're saying? Yes, he has to have an IRA or uh, 501c, uh, excuse me, or um, uh, four, 401k. Or if he works for a nonprofit company, then nonprofit organizations have an equivalent of 401k that's called 403b. So 401k, 403b, or, R, or IRA, either one of those three accounts. Um, so if his annual income is less than $19,500. And out of this 19,000, he's able to put away, let's say $2,500. He gets a credit 50% of that $2,500 on his tax credit. So if he owes any taxes up to 1200, 12, no, $1,250, the Uncle Sam will not charge that tax. He'll give him a credit. The maximum you can put away is 5,000? No, uh, so I are, so if it is a, if it is a, um, if he works for a company that does not have 401k, mm -hmm. then he has to go by the limits of IR, IRA. So uh, 2020 IRA contribution. Wait, before you do that, can you send that link that you have right now in the chat? Sure. Please. Well, thank you, Dr. Khan. You brought okay. it up, so people want to know about it now. Okay, so where's chat, where's chat? 
Oh, where's chat? Oh, I don't think you have chat when you're sharing your screen. Yeah, that's what I'm finding out. But I thought, no, there should be. Huh. Can you send a message? Let's see if it pops up on my screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I see it now, I think. Yep, there you go. So I sent him the link. Um, let's go back. And um, uh, IRA 2020 contribution limit. So 6,000, if you are age 50 or young, well, less than 50 years of age, you have $6,000. If you're age 50 or above, then you can, uh, you can put away 7,000. So this is, here's another interesting thing. This $7,000 or $6,000, depending on your age, will be, will be deducted. It will not even count as your income. So your son could make what was it, 19500 mm -hmm. plus $6,000. So his income could be $25,500. And he puts away $6,000. So his adjusted gross income becomes $19,500. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so he's not paying taxes on that six thousand plus he's going to get $3,000 tax credit. That tax credit comes at the end of the year? Yeah. So... That's pretty good deal, isn't it? Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Uh, the, uh, but let's say if he has, if he works for a company that sponsors 401k, then that limit becomes 19,500. So, so he could be making He could be making $39,000 all by himself, alone. But he puts away half of that money towards retirement account, towards 401k. Mm. So he does not pay any taxes on that money that he has put away. And he's getting, on top of that, he's getting $9,750 worth of tax credit. Mm. So, so this is an advice for all of you youngsters that when you start working, make sure to put away as much as you can towards your retirement accounts. Even if you feel you're too young and you know, age uh, 61 and a half is far away, you still need to start putting because you don't pay taxes on that money and you continue to build wealth. And we have already seen if you put away $1,000 for 10 years at a 10% quarterly rate, you could end up with a $30,000 at the end of 10 years. Imagine if, you, if that 30,000 remained in, the, okay, let's do a, another calculator. What's a good way to do um, a retirement when you're self-employed? Uh, uh, IRA. Individual retirement account. Okay. okay. Uh, you said if you have a uh, nonprofit, you should do the 403B? Yes, the company would do that. If okay, but it's a retirement account, it would be 403B. So it's my nonprofit though. So how do I do that? Or the nonprofit that you run? Yes. Okay. So you need to contact one of the brokerage firms. For example, Fidelity, Vanguard, Charles Schwab, and set up as an employer, you set up a retirement account for your employees. Okay. Is that something that I have to... Pay money for? Um, I don't think you have. You have to. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't know. I have. Not. Somebody's not muted. 
I don't know exactly how much uh, needs to be paid, but there may be some fee. Uh, I, I don't think it would be a whole lot though. So as an employer, you should just call Charles Schwab or I love Vanguard, um, but you can't go wrong with any one of them. Um, call them up, tell them you're an employer and you would like to set up employee uh, retirement accounts. So they'll, tell, they'll ask you, you know, what kind of company you are. You'll tell them you are a 501c3. They'll tell you you are eligible to open 403b accounts for your employees. Uh, and then follow the process from there. Okay, so let's, uh, for the youngsters, let's look at this. Let's say your annual income is $35,000. You are aged, how old are you, Maya? I'm about to be 16. Huh? I'm about to be 16. 16, okay, let's say 16. Um, female, what's it? <laughs> how would I make that much money at 16? Okay, let's say you make 20,000, how about that? <laughs> 16. Okay, 5,000. Are you happy now? <laughs> if my daughter made $5,000 this year, she'd be ecstatic. <laughs> Especially being in teen shop, right, Maya? Yeah. I only did a summer program last year where they gave me $300 just for being in a study. Okay. Well, he has to have 10,000 at least, otherwise they won't even, <laughs> calculator would not even work. <laughs> so let's say annual income is 10,000. Uh, okay, oh, you have to be 18. Okay. Let's pretend I'm 18, okay. Okay, so let's see how much money can you put away. Um, what do you think? So 10,000 basically means $770 per month. So can you put down out of that 770? Can you put down maybe a hundred dollars? Okay. Per month? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. No, so it needs at least $193. So, so let's say you put away $200 out of your close to $800 a month. So you put away $200 a month. And see what happens over a long period of time. No, 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 no. That was retirement income goal. Put the switch here. Um, okay, I'll let you play with this. I'm going to put this calculator in the chat. Play around with this uh, calculator, okay? I'm pretty sure uh, $1,000 a year towards your retirement account, you'll end up with like maybe a million dollars uh, <laughs> when you are 67 years old. Wow. That's a pretty good retirement money, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Maya? Yes, it is. Okay. But you could, you could have a multi-million dollars. So anyway, yep. um, bottom line is save money. Put it towards your retirement account. Whatever you make, at least put away 15, 20 percent uh, in a retirement account, you know, and spend maybe half an hour every quarter. If you don't, even if you don't do day trading or swing trading, at least put in half an hour every quarter. Uh, see what's where the market is headed. And I think you have enough tools, you have enough knowledge to be able to do all of that. OK, with that, it is already more than two hours today. We appreciate you. You are welcome. Thank You're you, welcome. Doc. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Sorry, say that again, Marketer. Thank you so much for your oh, time. You're welcome. <laughs> you are welcome. So, Razan, we missed you last Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a good <laughs> answer. So, this Thursday? Yeah, I'll be here. Okay. Hanan, can you join teams with, with her? Because Mariam already uh, did it last week. Uh, join what? Okay. Razan, can you explain it to her? Okay, I will. Okay. Um, so please work on that uh, for Thursday morning's presentation.
Are you putting your family on blast? Is that your daughter? Sorry, say that again. Is that your daughter? Well, she's like my daughter. Oh. Uh, <laughs> she's my friend's daughter. Both <laughs> Razan and Hanan. They're they're both sisters. And okay. uh, they are family friends. Got it. Mariam is my daughter. Uh, she's mute. Mariam, are you there? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Okay, she's there. Okay, that's my daughter. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining in. I appreciate it. And I'm, I'm actually very impressed with your patience and with your uh, consistency. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to help you uh, with as much as I can. And uh, if I don't know something, I'll definitely put you on a path to where you can find answers to your questions. Okay, with okay, that, yeah. thank you, Doc. Feel free to uh, so text me you. or uh, email me if you need any uh, immediate feedback. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thanks, okay. bye. Okay, take care. Thanks. Bye bye. 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 Assalamu alaikum, Zainab.